Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so, um, a couple of weeks ago, um, either just before The Hobbit premiered or just after I went to saw it for the first... <coughs> <coughs> or just after I went to see it for the first time, um, <coughs> I decided to buy the replica of Thorin's key that Wet is making and selling. It's made of some kind of zinc alloy, so it's actual metal. It's cast metal. <clears throat> and I thought that would be really cool. It's just a replica of it, and it's made by Witter Workshop, the same people who make all the props for the film. And I've wanted to have something of theirs for a long time, so I figured I'd go ahead and order that. And it came in a couple of days ago. <clears throat> Here is the box it came in. <clears throat> I have since definitely opened the box, but I'll still show you, I guess, what was in the box. <clears throat> Basically, there was this styrofoam box, which, I don't know if you can read that, but it says Weta Collectibles on it, <clears throat> on the styrofoam, and inside there's two little compartments, one of which is for the stand that the key came on. <clears throat> which is just a stand that looks kind of like two dwarven columns, and that stuck in uh, the other way, just right there. And I think they said that's made of reinforced polystone, which I don't know exactly what it is, but it's some kind of polymer. <clears throat> and it just says the Hobbit key to Erebor on the bottom and some other uh, copyright rubbish or whatever that is. But the key itself... <clears throat> You will notice I've done some slight modifications, but don't worry, it's no biggie. <clears throat> uh, the key itself is here. Um, I mean, I don't know what the camera sees exactly, but it's pretty cool. <clears throat> it's a three It's a very three-dimensional piece. Uh, this doesn't move, but then again, it didn't in the movie either. It's just one solid piece all the way across. And in these runes, which are... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over it illness I got on Christmas. <clears throat> These runes are actually Anglo-Saxon runes. They are not Tolkien's Dwarvish runes. They read Durin Air. D-U-R-I-N-H-E-I-R, -E like the heir of Durin, Durin's heir, <clears throat> to whom the key would naturally belong. This is the key that came to Thorin as passed down to him from Thor, from Thrain, wait, no wait, from Thror to Thrain to Gandalf to Thorin himself. <clears throat> and you'll notice I've done some leather wrappings on it, and I've got this little golden thingy on it with, attached to it by some rings. And you might think, what the heck's that for? <clears throat> well, I thought it was kind of a shame to just leave it sitting around on a pedestal, unloved, unused. So um, I went into the book The Hobbit and saw that it said that <clears throat> Thorin put it on a chain that he wore around his neck. And you know how I am with chains, so <clears throat> I made a chain for it. <clears throat> and this is the chain I decided to make. It is primarily... Wait a second, am I... Oh, this is the front, actually. It does have a front and a back. It's difficult to notice unless you actually know what you're looking for. And if you weren't me, you wouldn't know what to look for, actually. <clears throat> but um, this part is king's mail. It's basically European 4-in-1, which has each ring doubled, and these, the steel rings are, well, there's two different kinds of rings. There's steel and there's brass. Uh, the steel are 18-gauge quarter-inch interior diameter rings, um, the same rings that I actually have my jigs set up for right now. And these brass rings are really very close to the same wire diameter, but they're called 16-gauge. I don't know why, <coughs> but... It's the same interior diameter. And then you'll notice another clasp. Well, I'll get to the rest of the chain first. And then I've got three half Persian four in one chains braided together in the back here out of solid brass, which I think makes a very nice uh, regal accent to it. <clears throat> it's a good, hefty chain. And it was described in the book as being a fine. <clears throat> <clears throat> a fine chain. I don't know, I don't remember if it said it was a fine golden chain, but it might have said that. <clears throat> now, it's a fairly large chain, 
but I think it's finely woven in <clears throat> the fact that it's got a lot of rings, very densely packed, and it's just, it's nice to look at, I think. I like it a lot, and it looks really blingy, but I don't mind. A lot of really cool, regal-looking stuff looks just blingy nowadays, and it pisses me off. <clears throat> but as you see, there's a tube here, and a tube here. And this is a jewelry clasp that I actually have a couple of lying around, and it just slips into place. So the key can be easily removed. And I might as well put it on right now, even though it's damn cold out here. It's a good 50 degrees, I would say. Uh, let me take off <clears throat> the mighty Mjolnir first. <clears throat> to make way for a considerably mightier chain. Oh, that is cold. <clears throat> I don't know how well you can actually see any of that, but there you go. Hangs pretty far down, but I imagine that um, when he wears it, I mean, you don't see it wailing around during the movie, so I imagine if he doesn't just have it in a pocket somewhere in the movie, he probably just has it on a chain hanging in his clothes so it doesn't get in the way, which this would help considerably because... <clears throat> It's far down, you can conceal it under your clothes like that armor he has. Um, <sighs> ah, <clears throat> and one other thing, somewhat related to the whole, well, I guess I'll leave this on for now, related to the whole dwarf thingamajig um, and the costume I'll be building for next year's movie and just in general, because why not? I went to the fabric store before Christmas because they were having a big old sale and I got some fake fur. Got a good bit of that, like six feet by three and a half feet or so. It was a lot of fur. So <clears throat> I've got plenty of fake fur for costume and making it look nice. And I bought a bunch of fabric that I'll be using to cover the outside of a coat that I have that I'm modifying substantially for the purpose of an overcoat, <clears throat> sort of surcoat type deal. And that'll be decorated in a dwarven type style. And then I have some chain mail that I'm going to be making, which I'm making out of <clears throat> CPVC pipe. I have a pair of the PVC pipe cutters, and I'm just cutting about 8 inch slivers off of the pipe. I can get roughly, I think, a little between 900 and 1,000 rings <clears throat> out of a 10 foot piece of CP half inch CPVC pipe. That's the diameter of pipe I'm using, half inch, because that's the smallest it comes in, like at Lowe's or whatever. And it's a lot lighter than regular chain mail, <clears throat> and it's relatively easy to make. The only thing that I've, the only thing that's really getting on my nerves is that I can't paint it right now, because <clears throat> I have spray paint, I have a couple thousand rings laid by, but it's too cold to really paint very well, so I'm just gonna have to wait on that for a while. But I have a piece that I did a while back, and I'll show that to you now. <clears throat> this is what it looks like when it's all painted up, and this is just silver. I might do some other colors in there as well, other metallic colors. But it moves and behaves exactly like regular chainmail. It feels chainmail-y, except that it's so much lighter. I mean, if I were to make real chainmail out of steel with rings this actual size, <sighs> God. <clears throat> I'll be able to make a full, uh, I'd say, ankle length coat of this that'll weigh 20 pounds at the outside. If I made that out of steel, out of comparable sized materials, the thing would weigh easily 100 pounds. <coughs> so for costume purposes, this stuff is great. This is actually directly inspired by what a workshop's own chain mail that they make out of some sort of plastic pipe themselves. Their process is much more streamlined. They electroplate their rings, apparently, to give them a much nicer, more durable shine and more realistic metallic appearance. <clears throat> but spray paint's the best I've got. I'm not about to start investing in crazy electroplating technology stuff for a costume, so... Um, but yeah, that's about all I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> to any of you collectors out there who are religious about keeping everything in its perfect original state, I mean, 
I don't get that. That's <clears throat> if you don't get any tactile, it's for me. It's all about actually enjoying it in action, <clears throat> which is why I'm trying to make decent swords that don't fall apart. I don't like making things that just look nice. I like I like to make things that look nice and have a purpose. And so getting this on a necklace was really cool, and <clears throat> I like it a lot. It's comfortable. It's a little bit heavy, but, I mean, I'm used to heavy by now. I, that doesn't faze me. There's a little bit of a scratchy thing back here on one of the brass chains, so I'm going to have to figure out exactly what that is and fix it. But life goes on. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and have a great day.